Okay, hello everyone. Today is April 11th, 2009. It's Saturday. Um, I'm just getting ready to go over to my sister's birthday party today. It's at my mom's house. Um, it's freezing cold. I'm in the garage and it's freezing cold. It's 11.05 a.m. And it's freezing. I'm serious. I have like no clothes on. I'm like about to die. Um, I actually made a vlog yesterday. And I talked a little bit about just, you know, regular stuff. Um, I wanted to actually take a, some video time up, I guess, and talk about Sandra Cantu. But I decided not to, just because everything in that case changes day by day. I decided if I do it today, then by tomorrow it's going to be different. And I was correct. Um, just for a background, because I know... Um, that some people that watch this, they don't have me on MySpace and they're not related or I'm not friends with them, like I didn't go to school with them. So for background for people that don't know me, I live in the Valley in California and I do not live in Tracy, but we all work in Tracy. It's only about half an hour from our house. Um, it takes longer than that in the afternoon and stuff than it does at night. He works second shift which means um, he leaves the house around 2 in the afternoon, he gets there at 3, and then um, at night time he, leave, he gets off at 11.30, but he doesn't get home until like midnight. So traffic really does change the, the time and stuff of when he can get to Tracy. Um, without traffic involved, it would take about half an hour, which is what it takes him on the way home to get home from work. Um, so because of that, this case has been really, really close. It's really hit home, and um, it's really sad. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. In any case like this, it's always sad and sensitive, and, but in a lot of ways, this changed the way that a lot of people feel about child abduction. Um, if you're not big on the Sandra Cantu story, they she lived with her mom and Tracy, and 15 days ago, her mom actually called in saying that her daughter was missing, and it was like 4:06 or 4:08 p.m. Um, and then last Monday, which would have been said exactly a week later, they found her body in a suitcase in like some canal thing or something in some kind of water bin um, and she had been murdered. Last night at around 1.15 in the morning they arrested a suspect. They're not saying that it was for sure her or it wasn't her but um, the lady that they arrested, her name, I don't know her first name but her last name is Huckabee and I remember that because one of my friends last name is Huckabee but um I'm sure they're not related because that, you know, I'm sure. But, um, from the very get-go, from like three days on into the story, I was already pointing my finger at the pastor. And there was just something about the pastor, like the church I went to only had 15 people, and from things that people were saying about the church and stuff, I, from like the second they said anything about the pastor, that's immediately where I focused my attention on this case. Um, it turns out that his granddaughter, who lived with him, was the one that owned the suitcase that she was found in. And she was on um, suicide watch, which she's denying, but of course she would deny. Um, they thought she was going to commit suicide and stuff. So a lot of the stuff that she says has added up to her at least having a part in, in the case. I think that her grandpa did it with her. But who am I to say that, you know? Um, I wasn't there. I don't know. I don't even know these people. So it might be wrong of me to judge. But just my instincts, just my stomach, my gut instinct is just telling me that it's that guy. Um, I could be wrong. I could be, like, way off. I could be... Psh. But um, this case is really sad because the lady that ended up that is arrested, I'm not going to say murder because she's only arrested, they don't know, but the lady that is arrested, she knew, she, the little girl knew this lady and 
um, her daughter and her were best friends. And I remember when I was growing up, I never really went to my friend's house that often. Um, my mom would want to meet their parents and want to talk on the phone and da 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 and stuff. And I thought it was so dumb. I was like, why do you have to call Diana's mom before I can hang out with Diana? Like, do you not trust me and Diana? But now I understand. Um, and I didn't really have anything to do with my friends away from school until my mom would get a hold of their parents and their family and stuff. And if she, she's never told me no, like, no, I don't like their family, so you can't go. But there was a few occasions where she said, yeah, if you go, let me know, call me as soon as you get there, call me as soon as you leave. So I, because, you know, I don't know if she had a feeling or if she just didn't know them well enough or whatever. But, um, it really does change things because that could be anyone. I mean, we've all been over to our friend's house and we all have talked to their parents and said, like, how are you doing? What's going on at work? Are they hiring? Like, I was always asking my friend's parents, are they hiring? They're like, you're 14, you can't work. And I'm like, but are they hiring? And they're like, no, they're not hiring. So, um, I mean, that's just really sad. Um, as far as my friends go, I don't really think I would have any friends that parents, um, I would ever ex expect being murderers, but I guess no one would say, like, oh, my parents are murderers, so. But I guess because of the way that my friends are, they're such good people that I don't think that they could be around something like that in their family. I know that not every family is great and stuff, but I don't think that it could be like that. Um, so that's where it is now. She's in jail. She's not able to get bail. Um, I don't know, it's just a really sad case, and it's really sad because she has a daughter that's five, and this little girl is eight, so that could have easily been her daughter, and someone else could have done it, and as a mom, these cases always affect me more than they did before. I'm never, I'm always, like, 100% overprotective than what I know I should be, but then cases like this happen and it just puts everything back in prerogative. And like, the people that are upset and stuff because I always, with Bethany, like no matter where she is, they're like, can't we get her by herself? Like this just goes to show them that the second that you do let your guard up, something could happen. And it's not even that the people that are around Bethany I don't trust, it's just, no matter how good you are at taking care of her, there's, if someone wants something bad enough, I think that they'll get it, and there's no telling how long this lady could have planned this out or anything until she just had her moment. So, um, I guess this will come to an end because I should be getting ready. I'm going to leave in like half an hour, in less than half an hour, and Bethany's still asleep. But, um, I just hope that... I just hope that our family gets better, I guess. Like, I have no hopes or anything for the people who did it because there's there's nothing that can be said for them. And um, that's all. Bye.